welcome to a video that will help you replace a green screen background with a cool photo using a piece of software called paint.net. The very first step that we took as a class, I used this with third graders at Baden Academy, was to create your PNG file. Because this was a classroom activity, I began with a discussion of the STEM career that it related to. In this case, we went to a website called STEMWorks and reviewed a brief story about a graphic designer named Aaron Bristow. The next step we took was to discuss various file formats and the difference between a JPEG and a GIF and a PNG file. We went over to a bulletin board that I had spread with green paper and we took each of our pictures there just using a digital camera. I downloaded those pictures to the individual computers the students were using and taught them how to copy their photos either using control C or right clicking on the photo and clicking paste. We opened the photos in a program called Paint.net. Paint.net is a free download. Went into Edit and selected Pasting the photo they have just copied. The next step was to click the magic wand. and to begin to play around by adjusting the tolerance. We started with a tolerance around 35, 37 in this picture. And once that was done, we clicked on the green and pressed. What should happen is the green should be replaced with this grid background, which means that the photo itself without the green is all that will be imported and, and uh, pasted into future photos. Now if you did not get all the green on the first try, you scale back to where it says finish pixels in your history, and you try again adjusting the tolerance each time. You can go as low as 10 or 15 on the tolerance or as high as 79 to 80. At some point, some of the students would uh, only have some of the green come off their screen. And no matter what tolerance they selected, they couldn't find a balance. So you go in and you zoom using your window here, the plus on the window to zoom in. And again, use your magic wand to select just small portions of the green and you can delete that as well. You can keep using that step over and over again. Occasionally some of the students might delete the actual um, history box or the color box or the toolbox and to recover that you just select window and you can pick which box you want to appear on your PaintNet um, work, working screen on that canvas. Your next step is to save as PNG. So you click on File, click Save As, and it select PNG image. When you click Save here, a dialog box will pop up, and we ask them to auto-detect the bit depth. And we did talk a little bit about what bit depth meant and why it was important uh, for a graphic designer to understand. The next step that we had was we imported a new background. So let's again overview some of the steps we're going to do. We're going to open a new PaintNet page, we're going to set the dimensions, paste our background in, and then start a new layer and put our new file into that. We're going to resize file and again save. So begin by opening a new PaintNet page you choose what dimensions you want. Now for our class assignment we were making four by six inch um, printouts of photos that we could post on a bulletin board. So that was what we selected under inches. 
uh, we put 4 inch by 6 inch. And then we pasted our background. Now each of the kids had a different background that they had drawn or they were importing from uh, an image on the web that they found that they had the artist's permission to use uh, or it was a photograph that they had taken themselves of some particular area. And so we imported those and again you put them on the computer, you copy them, and then you paste them. But here you want to keep your background size and so we clicked keep canvas size. Now often that meant that the picture itself did not fit inside the canvas and we'd have to shrink that picture down to cover the canvas and yet often the whole picture itself did not fit in the canvas. So you scrolled back and forth until you found the exact positioning that you wanted and the exact frame that you wanted for your photo. So here you see that I'm using a, uh, it's actually an a image of a book cover that Grow a Generation is coming out with, 21st Century Parenting. And we start a new layer. It's important for you to start a new layer before you can paste in that. And you can toggle back and forth between the new cover that you're working on and the photo that you had edited just a few moments before. Select copy on the photo and then go back to your background and click paste. Once again a dialog box is going to come up saying do you want to expand the canvas? You don't. And you want to just scroll around until you have that portion of your that you want on the background. Once you're done you can save either as a PNG or a JPEG. That's it. Good job. Good luck. I'd love to see what you're able to create using this video. Share them with me if you have the time.